Okay, everybody. So we're going to work, work together on the body center cubic calculation. And so first, it's a good idea to pull up molybdenum and uh, make sure you spell it correctly. Otherwise, it's going to come up with what, you th what it thinks you meant. And it's not always great about predicting exactly what you needed. Um, so molybdenum which is also pronounced molybdenum depending on what country you learn chemistry in. But molybdenum is um, tricky to spell, so double check that. Uh, and then it's gonna come up with first the unit cell, which again is not a full unit cell. It's just showing the simple um, kind of most basic component of the unit cell. So really what this, this model means is if you imagine an atom at every single corner, Okay, where only the one eighth is present inside of the unit cell and the rest of it sticks out. And then you have this one atom in the middle. So this is called the body. And in particular, this one is the center of the body because it looks like that atom's not moving when I rotate. Okay, if it was not centered in the body, it would look like it was moving. All right, and so I'm going to expand to a larger lattice so we can kind of visualize what's happening a little bit. Here's the cube, all right. Um, in fact, before I move it, because once you move it, sometimes it's a little bit difficult to get back to where you can see the cube. I'm just going to go ahead and outline our one of our faces of our cube so that as I'm messing with it, I can see things. Okay, so again, it's cubic 90 degree angles and A equals B equals C. So each edge gets labeled as just A because, of course, they're all equivalent. Um, I didn't tell you this before, but if you want to turn off that tool so you can click and drag other things and move the molecule around, you just go back and click it again. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is change the angle a little bit and things start to just look crazy messy. And so this is where you want to get in there and kind of mess with things. There's an axis of symmetry there. Do you see that? Symmetric and it makes a hexagonal packing arrangement. And so that's interesting. But anyway, so here's our original structure. And we can see the four positions on the face of this atom. And um, we see the body atom as well. Now I'm going to do the space filling one. And this is going to look a little bananas. But it's important because we need to be able to see where the atoms actually really touch. No, this isn't going to work. It's filling in all the holes. And that's one of the weaknesses of a model. Um, in truth, the at edges don't touch only between the corner and the body center touches. So let me show you a photo of that. Okay, so from the images in the lab, you can see here's our body center cubic structure. And the only place where the atoms actually touch each other is between the corner and the middle. And that's true in all the positions, okay? So we can't do what we did in the prior structure where we were using just the sort of height of one of the edges. So in other words, we can't take this A and define it in terms of R because it's actually two R's plus some amount of empty space. And we don't know how much that is. So this time we have to get a little bit creative. And so here's what we're going to do. We are going to use triangles because triangles have a lovely equation called the Pythagorean theorem that relates them. <clears throat> All right. And so let me just clear up this, this here and we'll show you where the triangle is going to go. So we have to have a, a hypotenuse where the atoms all touch each other. So we're going to have, I need a ruler for my computer tablet. We're going to have a hypotenuse that goes across the body of the atom, okay? And so, okay, I had to pause the video because my dog was getting into a really good nap and she's a pug, so she's loud. I hope you couldn't hear that, but if you could hear some snoring, it's my dog. Sorry, one of my dogs. So I put them away into their nice little cozy bed and now we can focus on not hearing snoring. Um, anyway, and I also took the opportunity to clean up my line a little bit. So this line goes from the corner that is closest to us in the image. So this one's back from us. This is close. This is close. These are back. All right. And so what we do is from this corner all the way through the center of the cube to the opposite corner. So 
So just to show you what I'm trying to talk about. So here I have a sort of cubic, almost cubic Tupperware container. Okay. And so um, if we have an atom at this corner, the line that we're using actually goes from that corner all the way back here. Okay. So it's called the body diagonal because the body atom would be um, cut in half by this angle, right? So we're going from one corner, let's see if you can see it. We're going from one corner completely through the entire unit cell to the opposite corner on the bottom. So top to bottom and side to side all the way across. So that's called the body diagonal. And so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna label that body diagonal on our graph or on our diagram rather. Okay, so here in my notes, you can see what I'm talking about. So the first triangle we're gonna draw has, um, it goes from one corner to the opposite corner. And so our hypotenuse is gonna have those three shapes on it, which is fantastic because um, it's gonna have those three circles on it because they're all gonna be touching. And I'm gonna attempt to draw them on here. You're gonna draw by hand, so. Um, so we'll have one where the center of the circle goes into the hypotenuse, and then we'll have another one. These should be the same size, um, but you know, I'm on a computer, so it's gonna be a little rough. And I gotta put them in the right spot. So they're gonna be touching, because we said along that diagonal they do touch, okay? And then finally, I'm not gonna be able to fit it properly in here, but we'll have one more atom where the center of the atom is in the corner. Okay, I can't draw mine big enough, but uh, you guys will be on paper, so you won't have the limitation of the end of your screen in the way. So this last one should go from edge to center, just like the first one did. Okay, so that's kind of like the picture we're gonna have on the hypotenuse. And then, that, so that represents, going back to our molecular diagram here, hold on. Okay. So back to JMOL, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna try to show you the distance I'm talking about. So it's gonna be from here through the center atom, and then from that angle to the far corner. So that's our body diagonal hypotenuse. Okay. The other part of this triangle, so it's like as if we're taking our, we're taking our cube basically, and we're just cutting it in half diagonally through the body. So that means one edge of our triangle is going to be this side, which we're gonna stick with the, the nomenclature of labeling that A. And the other edge is actually on the bottom of this structure, and it goes from, um, it goes from this atom to this atom. So that's actually across a face. Okay, that's across a face, you can kind of see it. So here's our body diagonal, here's our edge, and there's our face diagonal. So we're gonna go back to the lab and we're gonna draw it in. Okay, oops. Okay, so on page five of the procedure, you can either draw these triangles with rulers yourself or you can use the ones I've provided if you can print. Um, we have two different kinds of right triangles. So the first one is the one we're talking about right now. This is going to be, oh, I don't like that color for writing on white. This is gonna be defined as what we call the body diagonal. So I'm going to abbreviate it as BD. The vertical um, axis we had is an edge of the atom. I'm sorry, an edge of the unit cell. And then down here, this is called the face diagonal because it goes from one corner to another corner of the face. Okay, so just to get these angles right, I wanna show you one more time with my Tupperware. So here's the body diagonal, right? So it's, it's inside of my Tupperware. It's going across the entire thing. A face diagonal is just like from corner to corner along, along the top like this, right? Um, or from the bottom, they all have a face, right? So it doesn't matter how you do it, but that's what a face diagonal means. So when we make that triangle, when we slice through our unit cell like this, what you get is the body diagonal is the hypotenuse, one side, so here's our, here's our slice, 
this is one edge, that's the vertical one, and then across the face, in this case across the bottom of my container, is our face diagonal. So I've labeled those on my first triangle. Okay. Okay, so we have our nice labeled triangle. The next thing we're gonna do is try to show those circles where they are, right? And so for example, we have one circle at the hypotenuse where the center of the circle goes to part way through the hypotenuse, okay? Um, and I'm gonna try to make these as consistent as I can. It's, again, it's tough on a computer, but try to make all of our circles the same size. If you have something to trace or if you have a compass, it's a great time to use that. All right, and so what we noticed is there was three atoms that we drew through. Um, and so we have one in the body that goes all the way, I said it cut it in half, so that's this one. We have one on this corner with a center to the edge, and then we have another one on this corner from the center to the edge. Okay. Normally when people do this in person, they have to erase a lot because it's a little tricky to get everything aligned exactly the right way. But on a computer, I can actually just manipulate it. <laughs> okay, so essentially what we have here is three atoms all touching each other. Well, you know, touching each other kind of in a line. And the other thing is, so this is just a hypotenuse. The other thing is that on that edge, we have another corner atom that's right here, but it, it doesn't touch these two. It doesn't touch across the face diagonal and it doesn't touch across the edge. So. I'm just going to I'm just going to put another atom in here that I think is roughly the right size. It does touch the center. So essentially if this corner atom touches the center, then this corner atom also has to touch the center. And so I'm going to put it in there so it's only touching the the center atom, the body center atom there. So this is our first triangle. Um, if we had a situation where the atoms are touching along either one of these axes, we can probably do a Pythagorean theorem that would describe um, everything we needed to know about the volume of this atom. But we can't because these don't touch. Again, we don't know how much space is between them. The only thing we can do is count the number of Rs um, on the hypotenuse here. And we can define body diagonal by how many Rs there are. <laughs> so here's the center of one atom to the edge, so that's one. The edge to the center, so that's another R. The center to the edge again, and the edge to this, wow, I gotta fix that. The edge to the center down here. So altogether, our body diagonal can be defined as having four radii. Okay, we can't define A or FD in terms of the number of radii because they don't touch. But I can write a Pythagorean theorem for this. Um, so you're going to have more room on your paper, I hope. But essentially, Pythagorean theorem says that A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And so this can be applied here. So literally, A is going to get squared because it's one of our sides. I'm going to, instead of writing B, I'm going to write face diagonal squared just to keep our nomenclature consistent. And then all of that is going to equal the body diagonal squared, okay? Now, um, I can also substitute in one thing. So A squared plus FD squared is gonna equal four R quantity squared. So what that means is that I have to use those parentheses I was talking about before, okay? Now we need a second triangle because I can't solve for A on one side and R on the other side yet because I don't know enough about FD and I don't know how big this distance is. So as it turns out, what we do is we're gonna take, we're gonna take our cube and we take that diagonal we were using and we kind of rotate it so that now we're gonna use the face diagonal as the new hypotenuse. Okay, and if we do that, then we end up with one edge A for the vertical and one edge, which is also A for the horizontal sides. So over here, 
our second triangle is necessary because our edges don't touch, our edges A and F, D don't have atoms that are touching each other. So now we're going to say this is the face diagonal. So we just rotated it to, to make another triangle. This is A and this is A. Okay, and so when we look at that, we already know what the face diagonal looks like. Um, they don't touch each other. So you have an atom on the corner of each side of your hypotenuse with the center of the atom in the corner, like that. And another one down here. And they're not touching each other, and, and, but the center of each one is on the corner. So I'm gonna fix that. That's better. And of course, the other thing is A and A are gonna meet at the vertex at the corner of our atom. So I have to also put, I don't have enough room here, but I have to also put another atom not touching anything because they don't touch on the edge either. So here's your edge like this. Pretend like that's a circle and that it's centered, okay? It's more of an oval, but we'll work with it. And we draw this one because what we can do is actually simplify a lot. Sorry, my Alexa is informing me I have a shipment. I'm sorry for the annoying noise. <laughs> All right, so we can write another Pythagorean theorem here. And so we get um, the hypotenuse squared is equal to a squared plus a squared. And so right away we can be like, oh, wait a minute, this is going to simplify. So when you have two, uh, you have one a squared and one a squared added together, you can get 2a squared equals fd squared. Okay, I'm going to move to the whiteboard so we have a little bit more room to work. So from this point on through the rest of the problem, we don't actually need the triangles anymore. We just needed those to help us visualize where the atoms are at and you are graded on placing the atoms correctly. So play around with the mole view model if you need to. Um, but make sure it kind of matches the picture I just did for you. And don't forget, guys, you can pause videos, okay? Uh, it's a very useful study tool. So we have these two equations and we have three variables, but this is a systems of equation problem. So um, today we get to use both, both geometry and algebra in solving our problem here. Um, which is handy. So I'm going to simplify this one. a squared plus fd squared is 4r squared. So 4 squared is 16 and r squared is r. Okay. And then on this side, I already simplified. So we have 2a squared equals fd squared. Now what I notice right away, and you know, sometimes this takes a few minutes for people. It's okay. But the fd squared here is the same as the fd squared here. I don't need to do square roots or mess around with any of that yet. All I have to realize is fd squared is the same in both places, and we have defined fd squared as 2a squared. So now I can write an equation where I keep the a squared from here the same, but I replace fd squared with 2a squared. The right-hand side of this equation stays the same. Now I only have two variables, and that's what we need, all right? And so we're going to combine these terms, 3a squared equals 16r squared. What we want is to, it always says to write an equation defining a in terms of r. So that's going to be consistent throughout the whole experiment. So what that means is I need to get a by itself, right? And I'm not going to solve this yet. I'm going to let it go for a sec. So we get a squared is equal to 16 thirds of r squared. Now I'm gonna square root, but I'm not actually gonna solve it. Don't punch it into your calculator. You do need to make sure to square root the entire thing, okay? Don't skip over things. Um, so here we're gonna have a on the left, and it's gonna be equal to the square root. I can pull the square apart if you like. All right, so we can apply that square root to each term independent of each other, and that can make it easier to solve. So um, 16 square root is four. R square root, is, R squared square rooted is R. And the square root of three is just some rando number. It has decimal places and stuff. It's not a nice easy number. So I am just gonna leave it like this. 
some of you are going to be tempted to um, take the square root out of the bottom of the equation because that's what we learned to do in algebra. You don't need to in this case because we are, we're going to use a calculator eventually. For the moment, you can just stop right there. And um, now that we know the volume, uh, we know that A, the edge, in terms of R, we're able to solve for volume. So the next question in the procedure is going to ask you to, to realize that, again, I said this earlier, but volume is just whatever A is cubed. All right, and so that means our volume here is gonna be this entire term, including the square root, cubed. Okay, so now you can distribute the cube. So four cubed, R cubed, and then you have madness down here. Don't let it bother you too much. It's, we'll, we'll work it out when we use a calculator. So just leave it like that. You can solve four cubed which is the same as four times four times four. And so you end up with 64 R cubed over a square root that is also cubed. Again, we're just gonna leave it. That's the volume. Uh, in this case, this is called the volume of the cell because we're using A to find that volume, okay? For the next step in the calculation, you're gonna calculate the volume occupied. Okay, so I'm gonna clear this so we have some space. The volume occupied depends on how many atoms there are inside of the unit cell. So for a body-centered cubic, we can use table one that you should have filled in and I reviewed it in the last video. Um, the body atom is going to have one whole atom because it's in the center and the, the, whenever you have a body atom, no matter if it's centered or not, it's the whole atom is inside of the unit. Um, the cubic part means that there is one eighth of an atom at each position and there are eight positions. So altogether you would have one atom at the corner, one atom at the body, so now we have two atoms total. So you're going to use the same logic um, in the simple cubic and the face center cubic, uh, just thinking about what's happening at each position and then adding it together. The volume of an atom or the, is the same as a volume of a sphere, which is 4 thirds pi r cubed, okay? Um, so in this case, uh, we have two atoms. So to figure out the total volume, I'm just going to take that and multiply by 2. So volume occupied is 4 thirds pi r cubed times 2. I'm going to just simplify that real quick so that we get 8 thirds pi r cubed. Okay, so now equation 2 in the lab gives us um, the ability to find the void fraction. That is, what fraction out of 1 as your whole is empty inside of this particular crystal. So the void fraction, we're doing BCC here, so it's body center cubic. The void fraction is equal to one, that's your whole, minus the volume that is occupied. We just figured that out. Divided by the volume of the cell. We figured that out in the prior problem. So here, don't forget to do the one minus, a lot of people forget that. So here, we're gonna just say volume occupied is eight thirds pi r cubed. A lot of you are going to be tempted to try and put the eight thirds in your calculator and get decimal places. Don't bother. You're going to do it all at once so that you don't have rounding error at the end. Okay. And then our volume, this was the strange one. It was like 64 r cubed over square root of three cubed. Okay. So the important thing to notice here is that the R cubed cancels. And so we can calculate the void fraction of all body center cubic systems by doing this. It doesn't matter what the radius is. It doesn't matter what the atom is. In other words, it's valid, all right? And so the rest of this is just numbers, all right? So you can go in your calculator, eight divided by three times pi, use the symbol you're going to get a number. 
when I put it into my phone calculator, I get um, 8.37758. So I'm just going to go 8.378. And you don't even really have to write this down. I'm just doing it to make it clear to you how I'm approaching the problem. Um, and then I'm going to go 3, square root that. That number is 1.732. I'm going to cube that. Okay, so I get 5.1961, blah, blah, blah. So now the last step is to go 64 divided by that number. And even my phone has a history, so you can you can you don't have to write down that number if you don't want to. It's okay. All right. And so our last step is going to be to divide the 8.378. By the answer we just got. Okay, so what we end up with is that the void fraction, you could abbreviate that if you want to, but the void fraction, in other words, how much empty space there is, is 1 minus 0 0.6801. So of course, the last step is just to subtract. And we get the answer uh, 0 0.3. 198, so I'm going to write 320 because the instructions say to calculate it as a three sig fig figure. Remembering that zeros in the front of a decimal don't count as a place value. Okay, so that's how you do, that's your answer for BCC. Uh, you need to write this down yourself and then um, attach it in the PDF to get the points for this one. You're going to do a similar exercise for face center cubic and I really want you to pay attention to the photographs in, um, in your book for this or even in your lab manual. All right, so we just did the body center. You're gonna be able to do the um, simple cubic pretty easily because it's just a square where you can define A in terms of 2R. For the face center, you're looking for the diagonal along the face because here touches, right? So that's your hypotenuse. And then of course you're gonna define this edge. So here's your triangle, oops. You're gonna define this edge and this edge. They're the same exact thing. These atoms are actually the same. And so you can draw um, a hypotenuse where they're touching very similar to our body diagonal, but this is the face diagonal. And so you can write a Pythagorean theorem for that triangle and it's easier to solve. You only need one. Um, because your hypotenuse has A and A on both sides. Okay, and so you're going to solve it in a very similar way, but simpler math, and find out what fraction of a face center is a void.